This video is kindly sponsored by Skillshare. This angle is not the best, so let's fix that first. Um, how do I do that? There is so much stuff scattered everywhere. Like my room is a mess. <laughs> and let's adjust it like this. Okay. I think that this is better. Yes, this is definitely better. Hi guys, welcome to another reading vlog. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be filming one again and like actually taking my time to share this reading experience again with you. If you didn't know already, I just came back from my vacation in Spain. And before Spain, I was very burned out, had lots of things on my mind. And now that I just came back, I already feel myself slipping into that mindset again and I want to prevent that from happening. So I thought maybe if I make a reading vlog, it's like a very chill experience of recording a video, actually getting some reading done without me feeling guilty about reading because my brain lately has been like if I'm not working on YouTube, Etsy, or whatever that has to kind of deal with work I guess, I feel so guilty that I'm taking time for myself and trying to relax and I need to just give myself some time. <laughs> I just made myself a peanut butter smoothie bowl. I don't know if you can see. Usually I add like fresh fruit on it as well, but we didn't have it. So it's like granola, coconut, chocolate, and peanut butter. It's a very heavy lunch and kind of healthy because it's basically just frozen bananas and peanut butter and it's delicious. <laughs> so instead of watching YouTube, I feel like my eyes need to rest and I want to read some in my book. I'm having a great time. And with this reading vlog, I want to finish two books that I'm currently reading. So let me show you those right now. Okay, so here's my little book pouch. I'm actually currently reading three books, but right now I really want to relax and I can mostly do that by reading fiction and not non-fiction. The one non-fiction book that I'm currently reading is Hallo Witte Mensen by Anusha Nazume. This is a Dutch non-fiction about racism in the Netherlands, so it is very interesting and I'm definitely learning a lot of things from it. One of the two fiction books that I'm currently reading is One of Us is Next by Karen M. McManus. This one was on my summer TBR. If you haven't watched that video yet, you can go watch it right now. This is the sequel to One of Us is Lying, which I read in April and really, really enjoyed. It is a YA murder mystery, and oh my gosh, am I adoring those types of books right now. <laughs> I've heard amazing things about this one. I mean, I am on page 136 right now, so I'm about a third of the way through, and it's like a truth or dare turned deadly and you follow the story from three different perspectives. Some of these perspectives are like little brothers and sisters of the main characters in One of Us is Lying. So it's very fun. You do encounter a lot of the same types of characters, which I think is very interesting to see how their lives are going in the sequel. But it's definitely grabbing my attention right now. So really enjoying that. But I was kind of unintentionally intentionally forgetting that I was actually reading a different book. <laughs> and then I already started this one, which is The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. I mean, it's, it's a huge book. I still need to read around 250 pages of this one, and then I'm done with the third and final book in the Poppy War trilogy. This trilogy deals a lot with like elemental magic and war strategics, which is not one of my favorite topics. I'm finding that out mostly because I loved book one, The Poppy War, in which our main character really gets introduced to her power and her connection to the phoenix, which is like a fire god. These books are very heavily inspired by a real life war, real time, how'd you call that? It happened in real life in like, I think the 1950s, a war between like China and all the surrounding countries. You can definitely tell that R.F. Kuang has done her research and I think I loved book one more. After the second half of the book, it really goes a lot into war strategics, warfare, and that continues on in book two and three. And I have enjoyed those two books definitely a little less than book one and I kind of feel like I'm the only one who has that opinion. Still, I love the characters and R.F. Kuang doesn't hesitate to shock you with her writing and the story. So that is what I do like about The Burning God, but I'm just not as obsessed with the sequels as I was with The Poppy War. So 
yeah. <laughs> Those are a bit of my brief thoughts on these books for now. Let me eat my lunch, read more on this one, and later today I'm going to Breda, which is one of my favorite cities here in the Netherlands, and I'm going to have a high tea. So see you later! <laughs> I wanted to give you like the tiniest little update on one of us is next. I am almost at page 200 and today I plan on reading a lot. I always plan on reading a lot, but if I'm actually doing it, we don't know yet. <laughs> like I said, this is like a truth or dare game and it says it turns deadly, but until so far it hasn't yet. And I think that I am enjoying this book a little less than one of us is lying because at the start of that book, you immediately know that someone is dead and like they are all looking for the killer and who is behind it and that keeps you very on the edge of your seat. And with this one, it is like, oh, Oh, that's so weird a game of truth or dare like someone is texting the whole high school and randomly giving people like challenges and if they don't really follow up on it bad things start happening but I have a feeling that very soon the deadly person thingy will happen I do really like that Karen M McManus doesn't only like focus on the murder mystery aspect of the story she really flashes out her characters as well and like gives them a good backstory so you do feel like you should care for them. I care a little less about these characters than the first book in this like trilogy companion novel series, but I'm really enjoying it and I'm having a great time. So let's go and read some more in this book. <laughs> I feel so dumb. I literally read three pages and then the truth or dare thing turned deadly. <laughs> okay, death and suspense. Suspense? Suspense is really starting from now on. Okay. <laughs> Good morning everyone. It is Sunday, the 8th of August, and today I'm gonna have a nice relaxing day for myself. Finish reading some books, gonna draw a little bit, maybe watch some YouTube or Netflix. I haven't watched a TV show or a movie in a very long time. Let's start my Sunday self-care day. Or maybe I should find a more amazing, more mind-blowing name for a self-care Sunday. That's not very unique, but it's still a name. <laughs> so first, I'm gonna make my hair look a bit more nice than this because th what is this? I don't know. shower I made myself a nice cup of tea here we go it's very hot so I'm not gonna drink it for a little while but I received yet another owl crate box lately I have been unboxing these boxes super super slowly and I still haven't uploaded like my May and June fairy loot and I will create unboxings, but I'm just gonna quickly go through this box because I always talk way too much about the items and I keep on repeating myself so I just need to go through this box within like Five minutes, let's do five minutes, I can do that. This is the July box. I don't know the exact title of the theme anymore, so we shall find that out again together. I am an Owl Crate rep, and if you use my code, Sabine5. I don't even know why I thought of Sabine5. The code is Sabine, and then you can get 10% off of your Owl Crate subscription. So the July theme for Owl Crate is potions and poisons. First off, I see a nice, cute little mug thingy i think suffering from a bout of reader's block our tbr jar is just the cure you'll need Ooh, i really adore this design it looks very old school and like such a nice item to display on your shelves it says let owl create apothecary decide your fictional fate maybe i should film a reading vlog in which like a tbr jar like this one 
decides what I read for a week. Next up, ooh, oh my gosh. I love bath products so much. We have Fiction Bath Co. Oh my God. Also, very random, but I love the designs of all these products. It really has that like witchy dark academia vibe and I love it so much. Ooh. Okay, and we're gonna smell it too. It sounds delicious. Bubble elixir with a water mint and clementine scent. Ooh, that's nice. It's also not super thick, so I think maybe you can use it in like a bath or, yeah, you can use it in your bath or as a body wash. I see some pins. <gasps> is this, that's not a pin. This is an enamel bookmark. Okay, how would you use this? I knew I was gonna ask this question because on the back there's like a whole how to use the bookmark thing. It has like Alice in Wonderland inspired trinkets on it. So you should just put it in the length of your book like this and then you have like two little dangly things hanging out of your book. But I would have to see how it is in practice because it is a little heavier and maybe with a paperback you could damage your papers. I have no clue. Okay, this is a very weird container. What is this? That should this be? I think this is like a hand gel dispenser. Ah, okay, wait, I already saw another item that's very funny, but I think that this is like a hand gel dispenser thing that you can carry on with you. And it has a design of like a poison vase glass vial thing as well. I think that's really clever of them to incorporate like a very useful item that especially during times like COVID, you will absolutely use. And then the item that made me laugh is this. And I was like, what is this? But it is a like popsicle maker. Fen Burns Fatal Frozen Delicacies. I don't know what this is inspired by, but this looks so much like the Calippo ice creams that we have here in the Netherlands. And I don't think, okay, the monthly pin is there still, but after that, I don't think that there are any new items. I love this pin a lot. It is a poison vial thing again with a heart in it and some keys on the sides of them. I thought that that was going to be the last item, but we have one more left and then the book. Oh my god, it has like little plants on it and like the Latin names. Love it! It says on the top, Poison Garden, and then you have all of these like plants drawn on it and maybe, I'm not going to use it as a tea towel, but like hang it in my dorm in Utrecht as like a little tapestry thingy because this is exactly what I love. Okay, yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Honestly, I think that this might have been my favorite Owl Crate box with all of their items, but now on to the book. Oh my god. It's so pretty. The book for July is This Poison Heart by Kaylin Bayron. She is the author of the, the Cinderella story. What is it called again? Cinderella's Dead. This is, I believe, a first installment in a series, if I'm correct. I have no clue. It's a shiny hardcover. Okay, I don't really like shiny covers, but that's... We're gonna have to deal with that. The colors of this one are so pretty. I think a whole lot more vibrant maybe than the original cover. This is the original cover, a lot more like green, I'd say. And the Owl Crate exclusive one is blue. Let's read the synopsis together. Strange magic blooms behind a poison gate. Bryces has a gift. With a single touch, she can grow plants from tiny seeds to rich blooms. When Bryce's aunt dies and wills her a dilapidated estate in rural New York, Brie and her parents hope that's surrounded by plants and flowers, she will finally learn to control her gift. But their new home is sinister in ways they never expected. It comes with a mysterious set of instructions, a walled garden filled with the deadliest botanicals in the world, and generations of secrets. There is more to Bryce's sudden inheritance than she could have imagined, and she is determined to uncover it. Yes, okay, from the best-selling author of Cinderella is Dead comes an enchanting story about a young woman with the power to conquer the dark forces descending around her. I don't know if there are so more special things in here. Okay, there are. We have a beautiful embossed rose on the front cover and then on the inside we have a very special dust jacket of our main character being in that like little garden thingy in New York. That's so cool. After unboxing that Owl Creep box, I decided to watch some YouTube, kind of relax, and I also followed some Skillshare classes, which is a super seamless transition into the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. And I am so excited that they wanted to work with me again. I've been talking about them in a couple of my videos already, and I just really love using their surface. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step into their creative journey. Skillshare is a service made for everyone from beginner to pro level. You can find classes on all of these different subjects, like illustration, design, photography, video, you name 
mint and literally Skillshare has a class for it. I am not making this up. <laughs> so the classes that I decided to check out are Procreate Animation by Rich Armstrong and I kind of like learned how to make little GIFs using Procreate which is like an illustration app that I've been using for a while now and that I make all of my illustrations with. So all of the like written animations that you saw in today's video I made on Procreate and especially with Rich's class I've been able to find a couple of shortcuts that I didn't know about and that saved me a lot of time with editing this video. So the first 1,000 people that click the link in my bio will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. And if you click that link, you also support me and my channel because you are letting Skillshare know, hey, we like it when Sabine talks about Skillshare. But like I said, there are so many classes that you can follow and I highly recommend Skillshare's Surface. But after that Skillshare class, I also just decided to read some more and I finally finished One of Us is Next. Okay, so I just finished One of Us is Next by Karen and McManus. My camera is kind of low, so I'm really like crouching down, crouching down, or I should like maybe put you a bit farther away. But I just finished the sequel to One of Us is Lying, and oh my gosh, this ending is very much like cliffhanger-y. Like you can definitely tell that there's gonna be a third bug in this like companion novel, sequel, trilogy. And I also did not figure out who the murderer or like the bad guy was in this story. I really enjoyed it, but I think I did like One of Us is Lying more than this one, if I'm being completely honest. I think I'd give it like a 3.75 to a four out of five star, so that's what I'm gonna rate it on Goodreads. Also unrelated, I was feeling a bit cold, so I changed into some pants. <laughs> now I should be continuing on with The Burning God, and it's just, on the one hand, like I do really just need to continue on with this story and finish it, because otherwise I know that this will stay on my shelves like this, for the next couple of weeks if I don't continue on with it. But I don't really feel like reading right now, but I don't know what else I want to do. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to figure that out. I am also currently reading a nonfiction book about racism in the Netherlands. So maybe I'm gonna like pick up that one and focus on that and write down some quotes that I think will be very useful. I think I'm gonna do that for a little bit and maybe tonight I will be listening to The Burning God. I just feel intimidated and I don't know what type of mood I am in reading wise, which is literally always the struggle that I have. vaccinated for the second time and then I'm a fully vaccinated girl yeah <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm so awkward I, I don't want to be but I am <laughs> okay I am back I made myself a nice big smoothie bowl this time with fresh fruit yeah I got my second vaccine the first time that I got it the woman who helped me and who put the vaccine in my arm she went so so quickly and this time the woman put it in my arm was casually talking to me and then slowly putting the vaccine in it I mean I'm not scared of needles in that sense but it wasn't like a pleasant feeling that I was like oh yeah girl just keep going I'm really hoping that I won't get sick a lot of people around me who had gotten their second vaccine and who also didn't get COVID they felt kind of sick after their second one but that's usually just because your body already has like the antibodies against COVID from the first vaccine your body immediately goes and fights against it so that's why you usually like feel a bit sick but it's just a very normal reaction and nothing to worry about so right now I'm feeling good but maybe tonight I'll feel a little 
tired or have a headache. I have no clue. Thinking positive thoughts. So yes, I'm gonna have some lunch, but I wanted to give you guys the final update for this reading vlog because I am almost done with The Burning God, but I just, I wasn't able to finish it yesterday because I had to edit this vlog and it just, it took me a long time. <laughs> so with The Burning God, I am on page 524 and I have less than 100 pages to go and it's gonna be very intense. I keep on saying that, but that's just because it's a very intense book, if you didn't know already. I have been enjoying the last 100 pages a bit more because I don't want to give you a lot of spoilers, but there is a lot of shamanism and elemental magic again in those pages. And that's what I love the most about these books, like the, the shamanism, the whole playing with your powers, and it's just very intriguing. But I think I will be able to finish this one today. Unfortunately, I won't be able to incorporate it into this vlog, but I'm excited to just be done with this one and be able to pick up some else because I have a ton of books that I still need to read. I just, I don't know what type of reading mood I am in right now. That's just always the struggle. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this reading vlog again. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!